this season, can we get promoted? Hello everybody, I'm Matthew, so Samurai Hex, and welcome back to another episode of Tactical Master. With me, Matthew, and our manager of the North Korean Dunderhead, Nick Wick. So, last episode was, I think, Season 6, which was our first season in League 1, where we finished 6th. And I thought I got knocked out in the playoffs semi final against Wigan after losing at home 2 0, but then beating them 1 0 away, away from home. But yeah, we ended up losing in the end. And yeah, no promotion this time, so can we get promoted this season? Might be a bit of an ask, but hopefully we can. Um, teams going promoting in with Blackpool, Reading, Wigan. Things going down, Portsmouth, Wickham, Leighton Orient and Stephen H. Quick look at people possibly leaving at the end of the season. Harry Cornick, probably not going to be given a contract and didn't play a game this season. James Barry also leaving because he hasn't played a game all season. And Cohen Bramall, who could be given a contract, but at his age, we will get a profit or anything, so he's been released as well. Then, of course, the two loanees in it, Danny Goss Barcia, who I doubt we can get on loan again, and Jason McKeown, who I think kind of showed that he's not cut out for League One. He's more of a League Two National League player. Um, so, yeah, we're not getting him on loan for, what, the fourth time. But with the new season means a new tactic. And so the tactic we're going with is this. Terzic, as it's called on the game. But in actual fact, it's called Terzic's Terrific 4-2-3-1 FM24 tactic. Apparently, it has 100% win rate and has also won um, Josh Daly, the creator of the tactic. We game, we use Josh Daly, but he uses, he just creates really good tactics. And uh, I always use the ones on FM Scout. Um, so, yeah, he's always posting them on FM Scout. But yeah, he's won in UCL and got a 100% win rate. I doubt we can get a 100% win rate with Dagenham and Redbridge considering um, at the current time um, we're 13th best team in the league. Um, not bad, not bad at all, but considering we've got teams like Coventry, QPR, NK Duns, I think we've got a Tycoon, Reading, Huddersfield, Oxford, they've got all them and then you've got teams such as Middlesbrough, Charlton and Barnes are coming down. Middlesbrough, big shock to be relegated. So they're probably favourites to win the league, I'd assume. So I think it's just going to be tougher to get promoted next season. But hopefully with the Thursday tactic, it'll do really well. Um, the tactical style is custom. In possession, we've got fairly wide. Passing space on the approach play, overlap left and right, and focus down on the left and right flanks as well. Play out defence, shorter passing directness, slightly higher tempo, run at defence in terms of dribbling. Then, when possession has been lost, we counter press, when possession has been won, we counter. Distribute to full backs and centre backs, and take short kicks. And it is high press line, we're getting to a higher offensive line or defensive line. I mean, much more often on the trigger press, prevents short goalkeeper distribution, get stuck in, and it's got an advance forward on attack. We dribble more and shoot more often, and advance forward on attack on the left would sit narrow and tackle harder. A winger on attack would tackle harder on the right hand side. And then in the AMC slot, it is an advanced playmaker on attack with roam from position, moving to channels, tackle harder. Um, ball winning midfielder is just a ball winning midfielder. No, no original instructions on knockoff, what you get with the actual role. Um, ball playing, ball box to box midfielder is marked tighter in terms of the two midfielders. Then we've got dribble more, sit down and tackle harder on the right hand side wing back who is just on support the left hand side wing back is which is on the left the left hand side wing back which is also on support you just sit down and tackle harder and then ball playing defenders in defense as both tackle harder and sweep keeper with no instructions so yeah hopefully this tactic will do is good in terms of uruguay we are now using the glasner tactic which we used last season that we're dagging on Medbridge. Hopefully that will do us well coming 
into, I think, the end of the World Cup qualifiers coming up to the World Cup itself. Um, so yeah, hopefully that will do quite well. I'll also say right now that I'm probably going to, instead of trying to make it, that I've become a legend at Dagger and Redbridge. I'm getting into that habit again now. Well, I'm played seven. I'm up on my seventh season. I'm playing up to seven seasons, and I'm like, I want to move. Uh, I always get like that with any Road to Glory save or any um, Journeyman or rebuild or whatever. I get to ten seasons and like, you know what? I can't do this anymore longer, and uh, much longer. I'm going to move to a different club and that's how I always play Journeyman's. So yeah, 10 seasons, probably be the end of Dagenham and Redbridge, so hopefully by then we can get into the Championship and become a decent side there. Now we have the transfers for the 2029-2030 season, at least for the start of the season. So first we'll look at the player that joined Cameron Scott, joins us on loan from Rangers, left back, left wing back centre back. I thought he could do a decent job as a squad player. I've had to accept an important player but probably wouldn't ever get that game time. Probably get unhappy, he might be loaned out, uh, record on from his loan and all that stuff. But as a left back, a backup is a really good position because we can need the left backs. To be honest, I, I expected him to be better than two and a half star but yeah. Oh wow. Uh, in terms of people uh, that left, uh, Rule Corrali went on loan to Gainsborough, Matthew Richards was sold to Forest Green. Now we didn't want to sell him, um, but they came in with the offer, and he was like, "I want to leave." So I was like, "Okay, well, I'll let you go then for that man." Hakeem Odafin also sold. He was unhappy that he wasn't playing enough, so we just sold him for forty-two thousand pounds to Walsall. Victor Bouquet went on loan to Woking. Emil Pogue has gone on loan to Cheltenham, and Lee Hudson has gone on loan to Boreham Ward. Then for actual start of next season. Harry Cornick, James Barron, Cohen and Bramall will release like I told you there would be. And then Kanye Frederick was loaned out. With yes, yeah, Stroud was loaned out or Stout was loaned out to Maidenhead. Jack Dixon was also loaned out to Maidenhead. Malaki Gordon was loaned out. Alex Bowell was loaned out. Ezra Carrington was sold to QPR now QPR came in with the offer and I thought if I can get 450000 for him, that'll be a good offer and they paid £450,000 for him. I think it's £350,000 up front and next to 100000 if he plays that one match. Nathan Wood was also sold at this time to Middlesbrough. They came in with an offer we didn't want to sell but then he was like I will want to leave, I want to go. So we sold him for £350,000 rising £400,000. Again, I think it's like one game, £50,000 up, up front. Val Brown, who we were looking to sell, was sold to Wrexham. £120,000 rather to £150,000. That's like one game you get, um, you get sold. What Like one game you get £30,000. Um, Sam List was loaned out to Bromley. Then we sold Roddy Stutter for £2 million. They came in with like 1.5 and I was like 2 million because that's his max feature of his money and I was like if we get 2 million for Ronnie Sutter I know he's a good player but 2 million for a player like him in League 1 for a team like us where he was on not much wages I take it all the time and we got 2 million oh, I just think I've been, I'm just so happy with that transfer and it's made us really not have to worry about any financial problems at all now we're already going into the positive after the sponsorship and after league income came from last season but this two million has really made us really happy in terms of the money situation uh, we also loaned out sean chambers Liam day was also loaned out and frankie fans was also loaned out as well i tried to sell frankie fans but no one wanted them so we just loaned them out to put Vale. Then Tom Palmer was, has joined us. Um, this wasn't my signing. It was director of football. I would never have signed to play from National League North. Um, but director of football saw it. I thought, okay, he looks quite good. I'll let him sign. And he signed. 
and he looks brilliant. And as a fringe player, three and a half star, I don't know how he managed to do that, but okay. Um, Ryan Arne also joins us on a free transfer from Sheffield United. And Carlinhos, a Brazilian, comes as, comes in from Flamengo on loan uh, as our new centre back. John Kendall Torrey um, joins us as a right back on loan from Hull. Lewis Hope. Uh, who spent most of that money, well not most, but some of that money stuff the money on a new left bar. So already Cameron Scott was replaced. Um, three and a half, three star coinability, up to four and a half star potential. Three hundred thousand pound from Brighton. I think that's a really good offer. Andy Wilson also joins us on loan as our new striker. Uh, Metius Muzzlowski also joins us this time on a left winger. Pat Winger, midfielder, striker, AMC. Uh, he's not as good on the corner ability, but I reckon he's better than the corner ability says, so I reckon that's why we got him in for £100,000, I think. If we can sell him in a couple of years' time, hopefully we can get a profit. Uh, otherwise, I think he'll do a decent job. He has played a couple of times, for a few times for us, and he's not done too badly. Um, just Sean Jarvis also joins us as another midfielder um, slash striker and Scott Stern another mid striker slash right winger so we've got three strikers on loan and well one of them might be playing right winger one of them will be playing striker and one of them will probably be playing in the midfield and all of them will be out of position but hopefully they'll still do decent jobs in terms of the results though, we were entirely undefeated in pre-season before in our first game of the season beating Forest Green then we beat Salford in the FA Cup first round beat Huddersfield, beat Chesterfield, lost to Coventry lost to Coven uh, Cardiff on penalties drew with Barnsley, beat Walsall and beat Bristol Rovers currently takes us to fourth place in the league 13 points from six games it's not bad. It's not bad at all. Now, 30th of December, we'll look at the results. So, uh, last time was the draw against Barnsley. I'm pretty, no, was it? It was sometime here. So, we drew against Barnsley, beat Walsall, um, beat Bristol Rovers, drew with Peterborough, drew with Charlton, beat Colchester, drew with Tramia, beat Brentford, beat Wimbledon, beat Oxford, beat Wrexham, beat MK Dons, Lost to Middlesbrough, beat Bournemouth Ward in the FA Cup first round, beat Sheffield Wednesday, beat Lincoln, beat Bristol Rovers, beat Mansfield, lost to Stockport, beat QPR, beat Notts County, beat Arsenal under 23s, um, beat Burton, drew with Cambridge, beat QPR, beat Colchester, beat Tramia, and lost to Oxford. Now you'd think that form would be top of the league, and we were top of the league for most of the time. Even though we just might have loads of games in hand. So yeah, the two games in hand now and a point ahead of us. So it looks like Middlesbrough are literally the best team, but we're second and that's not that bad. Three points ahead of third place at Sheffield Wednesday. So January has happened. No one joined permanently and then one to be sold was Carl Smith to £60,000 to Barnsley. Now, his contract was running out in the summer. If we were to get promoted, I wasn't going to give him a contract. So Barnes came in for £60,000. I know we bought him for a bit more than that, £66,000. Um, but I didn't want to get him to the 90000 and then let him go on a free transfer if we get promoted. Because I was just, if we promote, I'm just not giving him another contract. Um, but yeah, Barnes came for £60,000. We've accepted it and he's gone to them. However, two other things happened. If we go to people that are unhappy, we've got quite a load of people like Cameron Scott, Kalinos and Andy Wilson all playing in weak roles. George King is unhappy that he doesn't go on to Accrington or Morkham. But then Adam O'Brien, who I know he doesn't look that good on the current ability, but he's one of our homegrown players. Um, he hasn't played much this season, to be fair. But last season, uh, and back in the first season in League 2, he was really, really good for us and an important player. Preston came in and we couldn't agree a fee. 
So he's got unhappy. I'm saying you're keeping here. Uh, you got a lot on your contract. I can always extend it if I wanted to if he gets no longer unhappy. But yeah, he's staying now for the at least this rest of the season. Uh, or another player that was also leaving that I just no chance of selling is Ilias Poulos, who is our Youth Academy loanee, uh, a Youth Academy goalie. Um, comes in. He's loaned out to Darlington in the what? What? That'll be the second. That'll be third, fourth, the fifth season, and then sixth and this seventh season he's been a regular starter. And yeah, uh, no chance of letting him go no matter what. And they're only offering a million. Um, well, it wasn't even a million up front. It was like, th it's like four hundred, five hundred thousand pound up front. And then all the rest are add-ons up to a million on point one. I'm like, no chance. Giving me a million at least all up front. And they were like, no chance. And so, yeah, he's disappointed to not go and join Southampton, who are currently top of the championship. So I can see why he wanted to leave, but hopefully next season we'll be in the championship and he doesn't have to moan anymore. But in terms of the results for January, you can tell kind of where... These players got unhappy. Um, so after the Oxford loss, we beat Wimbledon before drawing with Crystal Palace in the third round of the FA Cup at Selhurst Park. And we lost to Portsmouth in the southern section. Um, I think it was second, third round, I mean. Before drawing with MK Dons, then losing to Crystal Palace on penalties in the third round replay at home. Barnsley would beat. Salford we drew, Bristol Rovers we lost, Peterborough we drew, Charlton, uh, Peterborough we won, Charlton we drew. So we've dropped down a bit, um, still in second place, but I, I don't think we're catching Middlesbrough now, so the aim now is to get second, and if we get third, I don't think we're going through the playoffs, because we'll probably be demotivated because we're missing out on automatics. But yeah, it's still so far been successful. So after the Peterborough and Charlton games, we beat Middlesbrough, drew with Wrexham, beat Sheffield Wednesday, beat Lincoln, drew with Mansfield, beat Huddersfield, drew with Forest Green, beat Coventry, lost to Chesterfield, beat Salford, drew with Barton, beat Slotport, beat Cambridge, and as you can tell, maybe by the top of the screen, uh, we ended up finishing second. Um, Middlesbrough in the end were champions, the actually got a new most points record in the season, I think beating Rotherham's of like 104 something like that in another season. But yeah, we got promoted. So, Dagenham and Redbridge are going to be in the highest league they've ever been in. And at least I think it is. I'm pretty sure it is because it said the new highest league finish in finishing second. So next year we're guaranteed to be highest ever league finish and hopefully by season 10 we might be pushing for a playoff spot in the championship and then we'll be leaving Dagenham and Redbridge and going to another club out of the other nine leagues. Probably not going to be France, Germany, Italy or Spain. It could probably be one of the five random leagues and then we'll go to another of the random um, pick leagues that are like top five leagues that were picked at the start of the game uh, or naturally that weren't random. But yeah, uh, promotion, Middlesbrough get promoted alongside us as champions obviously, uh, QPR get promoted through the playoffs, then Tramiot, Cambridge, Colchester and Ford Green all get relegated. Budgets for next season, so we've got 3.3 million in the bank, uh, we've got about, we've got £30,000 to spend in the wage budget and £1.8 million to spend in the transfer budget. I'm probably going to spend much money in the transfer budget, maybe only about 800000 I want to keep this club quite ticking quite well, um, but wage budget, I'm probably going to be maxing it in all honesty, because people are probably going to be wanting contracts, um, no one so far. Also, at least Poulos and Adam O'Brien are no longer unhappy, so it's all good. Um, but yeah, a good season. If we go quickly go to your guy that I completely forgot to show you. Um, we drew against Brazil, beat Colombia, beat Chile, beat Ecuador, um, beat Honduras. So we've successfully qualified from the World Cup uh, to the World Cup. 
Uh, Brazil win the, win the thing. We come second better than Argentina, which is always good. Uh, Colombia, Ecuador, and Venezuela all get promote, all get qualified alongside us. So Venezuela, I don't know if that's the first World Cup in real life. They haven't been in one, I don't know. Um, but yeah, they've done really well to qualify. But yeah, World Cup time. Uh, in the lead, in the group, we've got Austria, Jordan, and Morocco. So hopefully the next tactic, which will uh, for you guys, hopefully the next tactic for you guys, which will be the Thursday chat tactic, will do really, really well. But the Glasner tactic did well um, for you guys this season, and the Thursday tactic did superbly well for Dagenham and Redbridge this season in the league. So now we will expect the first seventh at the end of the season. Um, so I hope that that will probably be like bottom of the league in terms of championship with how much money there is in there. But give it a couple of seasons, we might build a squad to be mid-table. Who knows? But yeah, that is enough for this episode. So if you have enjoyed it, give the video a like. Subscribe to the channel as well for more FM24 content videos. Hit the bell as well for push notifications so you never miss an upload. With Matthew, also some of Hex, and I'll see you all next time. Hex signing out. Bye, everybody.